to the United Nations. Let's listen in. We are all united in the United Nations, and we stand by them. By them. We, as Arab group, as you see, all of us united, outraged by this massacre that has taken place, committed by the Israeli forces against the hospital, the Lutheran hospital, in uh, the Gaza Strip, in which, according to the initial figures, about 500 civilians have been torn apart and massacred in this outrageous illegal crime committed by the Israeli forces against our people in the Gaza Strip. We condemn this uh, action in the strongest possible terms, and we hold Israel responsible for this massacre, this crime, and those responsible for this crime should face justice and should face accountability and should be, you know, a punishment uh, uh, rising to the level of this crime committed against our people to be faced by them. We, as an Arab group, demand immediately a ceasefire because the continuation of the war, it means killing more Palestinians every moment. Had the Security Council shouldered its responsibility yesterday and stopped the fighting yesterday, stopped the war, the aggression, the crime against our people yesterday, then we would have been able to have those 500 killed still alive and with us. So the Security Council has to wake up, and we will not relent nor spare any effort that will uh, stop us from going after the Security Council and all components of the UN, including the Secretary General, not only to condemn this crime, and they should, but also to have an immediate ceasefire to save lives, to save lives of Palestinians, and to save lives across the board. Uh, this is what we wanted to convey to you, and I <coughs> express my gratitude and thanks to my brothers, the ambassadors of the Arab countries, and maybe we have others who might be watching us and expressing solidarity with us, other ambassadors. We thank them for this effort. We have to create a massive outrage in the United Nations against those criminals who have committed this massacre today against uh, injured uh, uh, and sick individuals in that hospital that led to massacring them in that heinous crime, and we should go after those from the Israeli side who committed this crime to face the justice and accountability, and that they should pay the price for such crimes. This is what we want to convey to you. I think that my colleagues, maybe they want to say anything. The floor is open for them and their questions. Establish an international investigation committee and will you work on opening the border crossing? Do you have any other options than the Security Council? We will not spare the security Security Council, they should shoulder their responsibility because they are responsible for the security. It is a war that is threatening peace and security in the Middle East and maybe in the world. The Security Council should not stay or remain silent. They should shoulder their responsibility. The ambassador of Russia have asked for an open session within the United Nations so that everyone in the Security Council and all the others who will be able to speak to voice their condemnations against this massacre and the Security Council should shoulder its responsibility and stop the aggression against the Palestinian people. The Israeli Prime Minister today said, and I quote, the intelligence from multiple sources said that it's the Islamic Jihad is responsible for the failed rocket launch. Your, your response? He is a liar. 
his uh, spokesperson and digital spokesperson tweeted that Israel did the hit, thinking that there is around this hospital a base for Hamas, and then he deleted that tweet. We have a copy of that tweet, and Talal can share with you that tweet. Now they change the story to try to blame the Palestinians. It is a lie, and they, the Israeli spokesperson of the army, about a week ago, made a statement in which he said, evacuate the hospitals, the hospitals are target, and in fact, they hit one hospital a week ago. So their, their intentions is evacuate, or hospitals will be hit, and they are responsible for that crime, and they cannot fabricate stories to deal with it. I'll ask you in English for the benefit of all of us. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Abu Mazen has canceled his participation in the summit in Jordan and returned back to Ramallah. Uh, just minutes ago, uh, the foreign minister of and deputy prime minister of Jordan uh, has announced the cancellation of the full summit. Uh, uh, your reaction to the cancellation of the four, uh, four parts uh, summit in Jordan. And by the way, uh, the, uh, concerning the bombing of the hospital, Israel has warned all the hospitals in the area last week that they will bomb them if they don't evacuate. And many ma managers of these hospitals have already told the Israelis they have about 600 people in intensive care and they can't move them. They have no fuel to move them even. Uh, so, uh, and they hit the same hospital, a small hit, last week. Right. So, so to say today that it's, uh, and, and the confession of, of Hanania uh, Naftali, who is a digital spokesman of Netanyahu on Twitter, that they hit it because they thought it was a base for Hamas. And then he deleted it after the cooking of the story of Hezbollah uh, rocket. Uh, all this uh, really uh, point out to the guilt. Why do you delete a, 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 a tweet confessing to the bombing of the hospital if, 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 Hezbollah, if uh, uh, Jihad al-Islami did that? So uh, we, we, we'd like to have you really your comments on the cancellation of the Foresight Summit in Amman. And the fabrication story, you're correct. I have nothing to add to it. On uh, the uh, cancellation of uh, uh, the summit, first of all, President Abbas uh, said that he cannot attend, and he uh, went back to Ramallah. And I expect him that he is speaking to, uh, uh, giving a national speech. As we speak now, it might be in your uh, uh, you know, uh, in your uh, outfit, you know, in your, Al Arabiya and Al Jazeera and all of them. He is talking to the Palestinian people and to everyone as we speak, I believe, and he asked for a meeting for the Palestinian leadership. So that's what he did. I understand that our Egyptian brothers canceled the hotels of their, uh, th this uh, today, after this uh, massacre, therefore they cancel the participation, but I think my brother will speak to that. Yes. And then, uh, of course, our Jordanian brothers said that it can, we cannot have a summit uh, with these conditions. We don't know what the other President Biden is still going there or not, but he canceled President Biden too? Okay. So that, because the only thing that would make sense if he made ceasefire immediately, and I'm coming to, to force the implementation of ceasefire. I don't know what he said, but the summit has been canceled. But my brothers from Jordan and Egypt can say, yes. 
in a minute, please, just, you know, that horrible uh, uh, crime and attack against the hospital uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, Gaza uh, earlier today is a stark reminder of everyone that what, what we have been warning against to happen. We have been telling everyone that we're, we're fearful that uh, uh, violations of international humanitarian law is going to happen. We have seen that before, and we have warned everyone to uphold uh, their responsibilities. We have asked the Security Council to uphold its responsibilities. Uh, 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 the permanent members have a specific, especially those who have special ties here or there. Uh, there, uh, there should no. There should be no conditional uh, support ever. We are we're asking everyone for, for having a ceasefire immediately and so on. And uh, uh, speaking now to the issue of, of the summit, Cairo is hosting the summit as scheduled. We're speaking about the Ca Cairo summit next Saturday, where parties in the region, uh, permanent uh, uh, P5, are, are invited and are gathered. The Secretary General has confirmed his participation uh, with the view to seek uh, 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 to address the humanitarian aspect of the outgoing war and how to 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 uh, put it to a ceasefire and as well uh, a, a very serious attempt to have a political horizon to address the fundamentals of the whole issue. This is what I wanted to say, and of course I add my voice to to Ambassador Riyad Mansour in the issue of the accountability. There is there is no party above international law. No party ever would be, as much as the Arab ministers did condemn uh, 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 attacks on, on civilians, the same applies. Uh, whoever has perpetrated that, that uh, horrible crime of today should be held accountable, and, and we will we, we'll work to that end. And we're, we're, we're hopeful that the Council will be up to the responsibility. Summit in Egypt, can there be a, a continuous um, uh, humanitarian assistance to the Palestinians in Gaza without a full and, and permanent and durable ceasefire? We're, 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 we're engaging on, on extensive talks, trying to, to reach a modality whereby humanitarian access and, and humanitarian corridors will be secured. Uh, with having sufficient space, of course, for humanitarian ceasefire. No, no humanitarian access would happen, but that is linked uh, uh, to, to some other issues that has to do with, uh, with uh, uh, the hostages and, 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 and so on, and those aspects that has to do with foreigners in Gaza. But we're working around the clock, and Egypt is taking that responsibility very seriously, and we're hopeful. We continue to hope that this will happen soon. Thank you, colleagues, for, for coming. Uh, as a chair of the Arab group for this month, I would to, uh, like to reflect the common Arab position that we are uh, condemning this massacre that took place against innocent civilians. The figures now are talking about eight to 900 civilians uh, sick and wounded the medical facility, the medical personnel, all perished in this hyenas attack perpetrated by Israel. Uh, we call on the Security Council to assume its responsibility and call for a ceasefire, unconditional ceasefire. We also would like to see those who have committed such a crime uh, under international law, such a heinous crime, to be brought to justice. For decades and decades, Israel has, and it's uh, the perpetrators of the, in the Israeli military and political leadership who committed these actions were enjoyed impunity. Not a single one faced justice. This has to change, and this is our common position as an Arab group. We think it is very important that we concentrate, the Security Council concentrate on ceasefire and to allow humanitarian medical access into Gaza and also at the same time stop any mass transfer of the population, which is one of the intent of those who perpetrated it, is to induce this mass movement. You heard, all of you have heard the Israeli officials in the past few days and past week who called on people to move to the south and that the facilities, the medical facilities have to be evacuated. 
This is a message, and it's not the first time that Israel resorts to this kind of message to induce the mass displacement of population. It happened again and again and again, and it will continue to happen if the international community does not stop it. Al Jazeera. <laughs> In terms of accountability, what's the importance of the Arab unity and have one stance and one position to uh, ask for, demand ceasefire and stop the aggression? Is there any possibility to have an action or a one uni united Arab position to uh, for accountability regarding accountability as Palestine state and as well other Arab countries we were able after many efforts to start investigations in those crimes that have been committed against the Palestinians by Israel, including the ongoing war crime, which is the occupation, as well as the crime of 2014 when Israel perpetrated several crimes against Palestinians. Now the crime is bigger and the scope is bigger as we've seen today in the massacre of the hospital. So what is required now is to be to pressure the ICC so that they can expedite the investigations that are still ongoing. There is another side, which is the violation of international law and all the related details that are that were raised by during questions asked by the International Crime Court and many Arab countries have presented several reports and we are now finalizing the second re we are finalizing the reports that will be sent to the International Court and this will be finalized within a week. After that, we will wait from the international court to set up the time and the date. So this mechanism is ongoing, and we would like to expedite the process, and we want a larger participation from all the Arab countries and our brothers especially when the second round will start, when the court will announce the dates and who can participate. As uh, actually has uh, the Arab, Arab, this is a question for the Arab group. The United States is the only country... Okay, that, that was the Palestinian ambassador to the United Nations, again demanding for a ceasefire. So far, on day 12 of this war, those pleas have been ignored. They condemned the attack...